I had a feeling at that time that I would do anything to get a shot. Anything. That is evident. Yeah, I mean, and there, there is a, I'll, I'll tell you the feeling that I had. What draws me, what, what drew me to this and everything else I've done are the characters first. Uh, who they are. Who is the person behind that mask of a face? Who are these people? How do they move? What do they say? I mean, exactly what do they say? And uh, what are they all about? And when I met Egan and Grasso, I realized that Egan was all about obsession. And that's how this case was made, by an obsessed cop who didn't give a damn about anything that got in his way, Chris. And that's exactly how Eddie Egan was. I didn't make the film to celebrate Eddie Egan. There are moments in the film that are obviously racist, but I can tell you that Egan was not a racist. This was an act that he did to survive in the street. And a lot of cops were killed that didn't have a persona like Egan had developed. But there was a, a book not long ago written by the great French filmmaker um, Jean-Luc Godard. And the book was called Everything is Cinema. And that's how I felt then. Everything was cinema. E everywhere that I would point the camera, I felt this was going to be interesting. You know? The, and these characters were going to be doing stuff that you didn't expect. And I, I would go to any length to get the shot because everything was cinema. That's how the filmmakers of my generation felt. Francis Coppola and Peter Bogdanovich and others who, who came later. We had no idea then how much money our films or any other films made. We didn't know how much money Gone with the Wind had made. And we didn't care. We used to talk about things like whose vision of cinema will survive, Jean-Luc Godard or Federico Fellini, <laughs> you know? Because Fellini was all about surrealism and beautiful framing and beautiful lighting, and Godard was about grabbing the shot off the street and jump cuts and handheld cameras. And I, I, we'd have arguments about that. And I, that's all we would talk about. We never read in the papers, like you do now, how much money this film made on Thursday or for the weekend, or, which uh, uh, my great friend, the editor of the LA Times, is here tonight, Devon Maharaj. And Devon, I wish you could be the editor of the Times in those days when they just wrote about cinema, not box office. And now all they care about is box office. That's, that's okay, because that's what drives the business, but it didn't then. Um, and well, I think, I don't know what side of that argument I was on, but I think Godard is the one who survived. Because almost everything you see, even on television, owes something to Godard. Jump cuts, quick cuts, like you do in Mission Impossible, you know. Guilty. Every seven seconds, the shot changes. <laughs> and in, in the days when I was making films like this, it, we tried to hold the shot as long as possible. We didn't want to cut. We only cut to go to the next scene, or if some guy was standing way over there. We had a, there's no way to get him into the same frame. <laughs>